Alright, so we got the best HP game coming up. We got HP 4. HP 4 for the PC, because the game is the same on everything except GBA, so play on PC for the fast loads. So timing starts after we select our character, so in 3, 2, 1, go. Alright, so most cutscenes in the game are skippable, so for some reason you can't bind your controller to cutscene skip, so we have to use escape, it's weird. Go for HP4 skip, yeah. So this game actually has some big skips. It's not like a uh, tech that's used at multiple places in the run. It's more of abuse of uh, the level design. So the first big one is actually in this level. Right near the end, we're going to skip a rock by just kind of walking through it. So in case you guys don't know who I am, I am Liam, and I currently hold world records in the first four Harry Potter games in various categories. In this category, Harry Potter 4, any percent, I am currently second. Sitting a nice 28 seconds behind Mike, and Harry is screwing me over. Fuck you, Harry. Harry. Fuck you, Harry. I should stop swearing. So basically, this entire game is just uh, being mad at the NPCs. This is this is the entire game. Uh, we have nothing else to do in this game except be mad at them. So unlike most uh, PC games for the Harry Potter games, we're actually playing with a controller for this game, and. The reason is because the charms, so that's Carpe, Aqua Erupto, Wingardium, and uh, Vermiculus. They're uh, they actually, they're actually much, e much easier to get the full spell power using an analog stick rather than arrow keys. So here's the first skip, it's called Rock Skip. And that was actually really fast. You need a pretty specific angle to walk through the between the rock and the bridge there. So that was actually pretty good. Yeah, this game currently has three categories on offer. There's any percent, there's any percent co-op, and then there's 100%. Uh, the co-op is basically the same route as any percent, except you have to deal with, if you're playing two players, you only have to deal with one AI instead of two. So it makes it a lot easier because a lot, a lot of things you only need one per, like two people to, uh, to do a multi multicast instead of three. So it makes it a lot easier. You can just run through like that. So hopefully the game doesn't crash here. That'd be good. So that was the World Cup, pretty standard. Now we're gonna head over to. Our defense against the dark arts lessons. Wondering why I when is three player come up? Uh, this is where you at some point, probably. Yourself. Thanks, Nixo. Get Thanks. <laughs> so we're mostly going to be using Harry throughout this run. We're going to be using Ron a couple times when it's convenient, and that time that we just used Hermione is basically the only time that we're going to use her. If I remember correctly. So here we're gonna abuse out of bounds to kill these dug bugs faster. If I could cast it. We can just kinda lift him up. I can't lift him up. Why can't I lift him up? Oh, that did work. Okay. So we just kinda put him into that like stick and he just kinda died. Instead of actually casting. Casting our Jinx set in. And the same thing again. These are in really odd spots. I like how I get hit there. It's fantastic. Um, oh shit, I'm dropping frames. Fuck. No, I'm not. Wait, maybe I am. 
You can summon rewards that are out of reach. By Doesn't say I've dropped frames, frames, but I don't know, man. Nothing like it just looked like I dropped frames. Energy. I need I need to get another thing. So now we got our our third charm to use. Yeah, that's that's what it looks like next to. But it says I have zero drop frames, so I don't know. Where why am I going? Menuing is hard in this game, apparently. Oh no, I'm supposed to use Ron here. Potter, if you're to survive the Tri Wizard tournament, I suggest you start collecting Tri Wizard shields. So basically, all we have to do in this game is to get a certain number of Triwizard Shields. I can't remember the exact number, but I think it's 26 out of the 38 that are available to get. And basically, once we get 26, that unlocks the Voldemort fight, or that unlocks Maze, which is the final task. And once we complete Maze, we can then go to Baldi. So by spinning our analog stick in circles at a constant rate we can get these big uh water streams which help us dissipate the fires much quicker than if we were to just hold down the charm button nicely done So you can see my bar in the bottom left. That's the extremis bar. It gets filled up by collecting blue beans. And once it's full like it is now, we can then cast extremis to gain a ton of extra power on our jinxes temporarily, which we're gonna do right now. Coming out of this cutscene. You can see these guys die in only four hits instead of a normal like 16 or something that they take. And we're gonna collect some more blue beans to fill up our bar straight away. So as they're gonna explain, these are salamanders fires, we have to destroy the salamander fires before we can actually bother killing the salamanders because they'll just spawn more oh that's unlucky that it hit me here i'm gonna stun this one and then cast up the fire and hope that that second guy doesn't hit me before this fire dies cool got lucky uh, if they want to come help, that's nice. So, the reason we're gonna cast at this Carpe first is because if we were to cast at this big fire as with the triple cast, basically, Ron, uh, not Ron, Harry and Hermione would go and cast at the other fires instead of helping me with that gate. So, we're just doing that first. Oh shit, I have dropped some frames now. Hopefully they help me and this will be done quickly. Yep, that was perfect. And I'll get this fire. Seem to be okay now, I think. And it's easier to kill those guys like that. How have they not killed this guy yet? There we go. Excellent. Now, For sure the best game. Alright, now that we've completed the story mission basically for the first level, we can now enter the level and just collect whichever shields in whichever or order we want. So we're going to get one of the harder right, setups yeah, out of the way first, which is to, to these three blocks over here to our left, we're just going to use two of them to get up. And it's really annoying having to deal because you have to do triple casts on them. So Hermione's kind of screwing me over. And you want to place it about there. That, that might be too close to the 
the wall. But we're gonna see if it works out. Nah, that should be fine. As long as I can grab it, yep. Alright, this next cauldron, or the next cauldron, this next uh, shield is actually one that a, a, a strat was recently decided to be viable, which is to cast out the block from a different location than intended. That platform there in the middle, where that dragon statue is, that's where we used to have to cast at this block from, but instead we're going to be able to cast it down from below here which can save upwards of 20 seconds so if we stand in this specific spot we can for some reason uh aim at it and then they'll eventually join us and we can get it down quicker oh is that in a good spot i'm not sure ah uh, no it's not in a good spot so i gotta come over here to manipulate them and then there we go if i didn't have to move the block a second time it can save even more yeah shout outs to luigi and infinity for bringing it to my attention that was actually viable it was previously known that you could cast at it but no proper setup was known to consistently cast it we're gonna choose ron here and that will become obvious at Back the end of the level and there are still several the reason for that will become obvious so this is actually a really good speed game because it's it's all individual segments and nothing that happens in a previous segment really relies on any of the other ones the only thing is the extremist meter that you want to make sure you have it full at specific points but as long as you have it full, then it's a pretty nice speed run. So we're going to head over to this side. And because you only need 26 out of the 38 shields, you, get, you just get to pick the fastest ones to get. Other than the ones that are required, which are all the story ones. Hopefully I don't get the soft lock. All right, we're good. Nice, I got both of the those double kill those kills from the the pillars. I wanted to move over here so that I can get this cauldron quicker instead of just casting straight at the salamander. Hopefully, I don't mess that up. Good. And this is the reason why we're using Ron. He he's the one that's involved in this cutscene, so he spawns directly next to the shield. Saves a decent amount of time. All right, and now for the last one, we're gonna do in Hogwarts exterior for now. We can't do the final one that we're gonna do much later on because we don't have the herbivicus spell. But this one is a good one to get out of the way right now because it's what's known as block skip, which is one of the most precise tricks in the run. <laughs> Once I get to it, you'll probably see why. We're basically going to smash a block against Terry and hope that it stays up. We want to wait until the AIs are closer to the blocks before casting at them, because if they, they'll cast right away when they're in range, and if they do that, they they get pushed backwards, so that then they're out of range, so then they stop casting, and you waste even more time. Turn around there to avoid getting hit by the fire once. So this block here, that's a, the, the shield you see there is the mini shield, the big shield is over to the right there. 
That's the one we want to get to. And normally you gotta bring this block all the way around and destroy that fire and stuff, but if we do it properly and they don't grab the ledge, that looks good actually. I'm gonna push Harry around. That should be good. Yeah, look at that. That's that's really nice. It was a bit slow because I had to push Harry because he moved slightly over, but other than that, it was fine. So Forbidden Forest, this is the next story mission. We're going to go through the forest to find the dragon, basically. And then at the end, we're just going to kill a Scroot for some reason, and it's going to give us a shield. So that cutscene that you just saw, it's skippable, but nobody really knows how it works. The world record gets the skip and really nobody knows how it works so this part here is kind of rng where these duck bugs spawn yeah i'm gonna start killing that one so that i can then cast here because all i need to do is get past here i don't need to i don't care about killing the duck box that was a really good boo boo tuber shot so those are the things that i fling around they're called boo boo tubers uh Basically, their only use is to kill those mushrooms. These guys are complete RNG. I really don't want to lose too much health here because the next skip is what's known as fire skip, and it involves taking a lot of damage. In fact, when you first enter the cutscene, you're guaranteed to take damage uh, from, from what happens in the cutscene. And then to do the fire skip, you want to take a lot of damage. So here's the cutscene. We're gonna try and skip the second and third fires from this dragon. And we can do that by simply going quickly. So we're gonna get this first one. And hopefully there's two dug bugs that are gonna spawn. If they're in good spots, we should be fine. Yeah, that looks good. As long as I don't get stuck on invisible walls. Yeah, got the first fire skip. As long as I don't get stuck on an invisible wall. You got the second fire skip. Nice. That's unfortunate. We're gonna head over here and take the left path through the forest. It involves a boober tuber, which boober tubers are really hard to control. Yep, yeah, see, I can't work with that. I need that patch of mushrooms to be destroyed. You really want to get that in one shot, because as you can see, getting us you have to wait for it to respawn, and they're just a pain to deal with. So here is a secondary fire skip, which is really easy, because it's just walking. They, another poor instance of level design. You can just kind of walk behind the fire to uh, to get past this part instead of actually destroying, putting out the fires. Just kind of like that. Normally you take damage, but I didn't that time. Oh, Ron's dead. So as you can see, our extremist meter is full again, and that's going to be useful because we're going to use it to kill this Scroot coming up. I like how Harry just stops there all the time. He normally gets hit by the fire. This fire, if you just hold down the charm, it will get destroyed straight away. And these guys get set on fire for some reason. You can move during this cutscene, but I did a really poor job there, so this probably isn't gonna work. Like, you could get Harry into this area straight away, but yeah, I got stuck on something. Oh well. So we're going to extremis here, and then we're going to cast behind us. There we go. Alright, next we're going to head back into forest and get one of the two extra shields we get from forest. 
two or three. I don't even remember anymore. I think it's just the two. And they both involve going in the same direction. It involves a pretty precise boober tuber shot, but shouldn't be too bad. Also, sorry if the frame rate seems kind of low. I honestly don't know what's going on. Like, it's not like I'm dropping frames, it's just OBS is not staying at the proper frame rate. I really don't know. So it's this boober tuber shot here. Ah, it's way too far. <laughs> yeah. That uh, patch on the left there. You need that one, and then you need either the one behind it, which I already got, or the one to the right there. You need either of those two sets to get through there. So another skirt. This one, we're not really bothering to do anything except just kill it. I might die. Shit, I'm dead. That's great. The skirt spawned in a really bad spot. There's really nothing I could do. At least I got him killed. So I didn't have to worry about it. Alright, first task. It's a, it's it's the best task because it's dragon, but it's terrible because it's inverted broom controls. So down is up and up is down. So it's it's not fun. So basically the only mechanic used in this level is basically there's two things you need to know about this level is that at the end of it you're awarded uh, gold, silver, or bronze by how many of these bean rings you get and if you get gold you get three triwizard shields, if you get bronze you get one, silver you get two, don't know why I said in this order. And then the other mechanic you need to know is these boost rings which are these blue ones which basically boosts your speed. And if you notice, the second boost ring, I went right through it, but it just didn't boost me because this game absolutely hates me. That's my only explanation. So basically for, for Dragon, just get a bunch of bean rings and you'll be fine. Lake also awards you Triwizard Shields based on your uh, play in the challenge, so gold, silver, and bronze in the same way. Uh, and we want we want to make sure that we get three challenge shields from each of them, so that we can. I was supposed to grab that boost ring, so that we can not have to play more levels, because we have to do the the tasks anyways. So we may as well get these six shields from it. Dragon is actually very easy to get gold. Lake is Lake is a bit different. It's not based on how many of the bean rings you hit, but it's based on the amount of Grindy Lows that you kill. Which is kind of interesting way to do it. Oh, wow. Miss a lot of boost rings during this. And the last one too. Last one really sucks. To miss. They all really suck to miss. So as long as I'm gold, it's all good. And it is. So now one of the longer story missions. Since we've beaten the first task, we now have our egg. So we're just gonna head straight to the prefix bathroom. And for some reason, Ron and Hermione are gonna follow us. And Ron's gonna be a dumbass and lose our egg. Are you sure only prefects can use this bathroom? Whoa! Oops! Sorry, Harry.
this wall is very strong, so it requires four cauldrons to get through. So we're basically going to go all the way down to the egg and then come all the way back up. A very amazing strat would be if we could somehow find a way to target the egg from way up here. It would literally save four and a half minutes. Of just walking around the level. So if somebody wants to get on that, that'd be great. Once you see these taps turn, like, come on, that, they get a bunch of speed. You can just let go straight away instead of waiting till they finish all the way. Same with these uh, bridges like this. They get a burst of speed that you'll see. And once you see it, like that, you can just run, let go and run. Saves a bit of time, you know, make sure we no, don't miss that. Does nobody want to cast? Sometimes they just don't want to cast, you know. If I get it right, I'll be able to fall down like that, which saves a bit of time. Well, I'm still in the carpe animation. So the goal for this level is to not die, which is a lot easier said than done because of all these earthlings. So hopefully I'm actually on good health, but no, yeah, Bron just ate one of those cauldron cakes. I would have preferred if they were still there when I came back because you got to come back through that same way. So we want to get the fire first, and that looks like I got it. Oh, but he hit me. That got it too, but he might hit me. Ah, oh, he did relight it. I was... That... Yeah, okay. Okay, we're good. Yeah, these were really bad. At least the third one didn't spawn. The thing about optimizing this game is you have to understand the movements of each different set of of uh, enemies at each different location, and you need to know the best strategies to deal with them. That involves dealing with the AI, as well as the uh, enemies themselves. So these Urklings can actually snipe you from all the way over there while you're doing this. It's kind of unfortunate when it happens. Can I cast at what I want to, please? Wow, an Erkling followed us all the way down here. That's pretty insane. Now, if they want to not deal with him so they can come help me with this egg, that'd be great. All I need is for everybody to cast at this egg. There we go. That's pretty good. And now we just gotta go all the way back. So our goal is to not die, but now all these steam vents are alive and they can do upwards of 15 damage each. Depending on how you get hit by them. Do we got any health here? Nothing. 
fantastic. Gonna stop there a bit. That was perfect timing. Only get seven there. I might actually be able to survive this. Got two more steam vents to do. One more steam vent. Go, 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 don't get hit. Nice, we made it. Everybody else died except me. Not a great egg, but good that I didn't die. So we're gonna go straight back in and do three shields in the bathroom. First one is the infamous bridges which involves going through this first gate coming up, which has been known to stump everybody for how to get uh, Ron or Hermione to help you. But once you understand it, it's pretty simple, but kind of hard to explain. Carberry is probably the hardest spell to optimize. Because you want to. Basically, you want to go. Uh, perpendicular to the way that your spell is. Like, switch in direction. So, like, there, my spell was going left, right. So, I was going up, down on my analog. So this block can be an absolute nightmare, as can any triple cast block in the game. Is that hidden? stay here in this corner have them come down have Hermione come down too and then we're gonna cast at this block and Braun went to a bad spot this block will not last the goal would be to get this done in one guardian cast but that's not gonna happen actually it might cool nope Emmy taken a pyramid slowly. Taking advantage of the dead chat. I have no idea where Ronnie and Ron are. Okay, they're here. Pretty simple concept, but to get that block in one cast saves a lot of time, but the setup is very precise. Alright, and the last one we're going to do in here for now is we're going to return all the way back to the bathroom and break the shit out of it. Except not the shit, we're going to break the tub. By standing at that corner, you get the AI to spawn right there straight away. They just kind of teleport there. We need to remember to break this part here. Okay, got it.
Yo, why did you cast that? Also, the physics of me pulling it against Hermione and it just going in my direction, just don't pay attention to that. Physics don't apply in this game. Same idea, we're gonna try not to die. Thankfully, it has less steam vents, like that one doesn't activate. So you don't have to worry about it too much. These Urglings follow me up, so I want to try and get this before... Oh, I actually got that. I was kind of lucky. Before they hit me, that was what I wanted to say. And the steam vent at the end isn't functioning either, so we can just run past. And we're gonna use a cauldron to break the tub and collect ourselves a shield. So the last story shield, other than the, the two remaining tasks, is the gillyweed. So we're actually on a time sensitive. No, we're not. What? No, this is not Hondo. Never mind. Uh, yeah, completely ignore what I just said. So this is the only level where we're actually gonna bother grabbing all ten of the mini shields. So I'm gonna grab the first one right here because we don't want to have to come all the way back to this area to grab it. And basically what the mini shields do, if you don't know, is that there's 10 in each level. And if you collect all 10 near the spawn of the level, it will spawn a full Triwizard Shield. So if all 10 of them are near where you're gonna go, you may as well grab them and you can get a 20 second shield. The only two that are kind of out of our way are inside this greenhouse here, to our right, where I think I'm going to go first. Oh, yeah. did not think I, I hit the trigger yet. No. Oh my god. We're gonna head over to the right here, and we're gonna grab two mini shields. One we can just axe you from over to an area that we're not even gonna bother going to right here. Boom. And the other one is just over here. That uh, card over there, it vanishes after a certain amount of time playing level. So in 100%, we want to make sure we get to this part fast enough to be able to grab it. Cast uh, these that might get both. It only got one, so we're gonna need another boober tube. Okay. Uh, cast, not cast. Fling. Hopefully. Come on. Stop casting at the mosque. That's way too high. Wow. I I haven't missed this shot in a while. These guys are in my way. That's uh, too high again. Oh my gosh. Wow. These camera angles are just really weird. And now the thing's just getting destroyed. Fantastic. Don't cast there. Don't cast there. Oh my god. That's that good? Wow. I literally have not missed this cast. Or this fling. In the two attempts that I have. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Oh my gosh! Cast! There! There we go. Should that work? There we go. Wow. That was something else. Taking a lot of damage, which is not great. 
This is one level where you don't want to take a lot of damage because of what happens at the end. Harry is not really casting where I want him to cast today. Kind of unfortunate. So here we're gonna have to take our time and actually cast some of these to stun them. So they don't bug us while we're casting over here. So it didn't really work out. Everybody's having fun with the pyramids. Any shield under there? Currently, I'm one blue bean short. We want to have Extremis going into the next area. Harry wants to cast. There we go. So Ron's actually dead, but he's not because the game's weird. So if he grabs that, he'll be undead. Look, he's undead. Hopefully I just get a blue bean from casting at this, which I have to cast anyways. And I do, so we're fine. And we got 85 health going in. That's pretty good. This greenhouse is a jungle. Yes. Basically, basically it's the luck what's gonna happen next. And I need good luck. Not a good start. So, coming up next, we're gonna see a cutscene, and then we're gonna use Extremis to hopefully kill at Red Moss. I can't use Ex I was hitting the wrong button. I did not kill him. I can still manage it. I got him. Fantastic. Now we don't have to deal with him. Oh my god, cast the right spell. What's my favorite level? Do you get my favorite level or my favorite shield? Full level or just shield. It's over there. Hey, Potterthon. Professor Sprout's not going to be pleased. I hope Professor Sprout's good at the Reparo spell. Grab that ninth mini shield. Camera's really awkward in this section. That's not a good thing, Did you know that earthlings are protected in some countries? Protected? The only thing that needs protecting around here is us. I think my favorite level overall is uh, exterior. 
don't know what my favorite shield specifically is. Although I do like Herbology other than the story mission because the rest of these that we're gonna do right now are real fast. This is the longest one that we're gonna do other than the story mission. It's not even that long. And it allows us to get basically back up to full on our extremis meter, which is great. All that's riding on this split is this boober tuber fling at the end. It's the only relevant portion of it. Just need to make sure we get it. Well, exterior in any percent. I didn't get it, yeah. You don't even go down towards the Earthlings. Hermione is standing right on top of where the Boober Tuber spawns, so I literally can't do anything until she moves. It's so rare for me to miss these Boober Tuber flings. Like, I don't know what's up. Now here, this is this is a really easy shield if you know what you're doing. Except apparently in my PB where I have well over 30 seconds to save on it. You just place a little boulder here. You come over here, you cast at this block. Yeah, I knew she was too far away. I didn't want that. Ron, get off of there. And you place it up over here. What? What is happening? Go up. Go up! Oh, it's not over the stairs. I'm good at this game, I swear. That's why I'm running it here. I have no depth perception right now. Do not cast there. Cast there. There we go. Is that so difficult? That's very slow. But either way. Yes, if you don't place that first boulder, then moss start spawning and ruin your day. So now we're gonna get a shield and then our, uh, during the shield, we're gonna get our final mini shield. And we're gra we'll grab the mini shield reward, which is try wizard shield. And then we can move on to task number two, which is the lake. And then basically we're just going to clean up the things that we, the shields that we've, haven't been able to do up to this point because we haven't known the Heribicus spell. I did not walk close enough, I don't think. Oh, I somehow got that. I got hit, but whatever. I also love how these mosps can hit you while you're already down. And how three hits do over half the damage. There's the 10th mini shield. It was not intended for you to be able to cast at that bridge like that. But it saves a lot of time. So before I do uh, the second task, I'm actually going to do 
um, force shield. And the reason is because my extremis meter is already full. So this shield basically requires a full extremis meter. It is extremely difficult to do without it. Basically, we're going to try and kill a really big skirt while mosps are flying all around and trying to bite our asses. And Extremis just makes the amount of hits needed to kill the skirt much more manageable. Hurry up. So we're basically going over the same way where we killed the small skirt about half an hour ago, except we're gonna go kill the big one. Oh my gosh! Uber tuber flings today, man. There's not having it. That should be good. Some days, boober tuber flings just don't like anybody. And by some days, I mean every day. So hopefully this guy leaves us alone while we try and go kill his friend. Yep, he will. He's just giving himself a concussion. So once we get near the top here, mosps are going to start spawning. All I need is for Ron and Hermione to not be down while I try and cast Extremis. I'm, ca I'm trying to cast Extremis. There we go. Fantastic. All right, now we're gonna go do the second task. Which is just basically a six and a half, seven minute auto scroller. You hold down charm, which is the speed up button. And that's it. Make sure you don't die. If we do die, and only get a silver, we're gonna have to grab another shield, but there's a pretty easy backup in Herbology that takes about a minute 40. So like I said earlier, the, the way that you're awarded gold, silver, bronze is not only dependent on time, but also on the amount of Grindylows you kill. So we're going to try and kill a bunch throughout the run. This isn't exactly an auto scroller because there are what are known or what I refer to as encounters where basically it doesn't let you pass until you kill a certain amount of Grindylos. There's two of those. Uh, one coming up after this cutscene, which you're gonna see in about 10 seconds, and then another one as we enter the town, city. And then at the end of the level, we have two roof encounters where we have to break through the roofs well, Grindylos are trying to kill us. So here's the first encounter. Basically, you want to kill these guys as soon as they spawn. If possible. That is a pretty good encounter. The unfortunate part about encounters is that once you leave them, you have very little control. So if somebody's shooting, if a Grindylos shooting at you, you're almost certain to get hit. I got kind of lucky there. I didn't take any damage. Here's just an opportunity to kill a bunch of Grindylos as you're going through. Let's look at all of these. Taking a couple hits isn't that bad. Normally I'm down to 60 or 70 health. And I'm stressing. Here you want to hit this mermaid early. Because 
You really can't hit her late? Wow, yeah, okay. There's my health gone. Uh, the uh, mermaids steal your Grandilo if you don't jinx them. So here's the second encounter. This one's kind of awkward to hit all of the ones behind these barriers. Because you, you just can't, really. Barriers just kind of block you because you don't really have a control over exactly where your spells move. See so how yeah, they kind of twist and turn. Basically, you kind of have to hope that it fits through the hitbox. You get lucky. So, 60 health is more than fine currently. Anything 40 or above here and you should easily be fine. This middle section is basically just an auto scroller. Make sure you get those, and that's about it. Hmm. Whatever. Take a hit, so be it. Gives you a chance to kill a couple more Grenillos, because during roofs you just want to go as fast as possible. You don't want to have to bother with killing Grenillos. You should already have enough at this point. Here are the roof sections. You basically have to destroy what are these skull things to open our way through the roofs. What most runners do is concentrate on one quarter section at a time like this and then once you get that one you move on kind of have to anticipate how long each one's going to take if your spells would stop missing like they are here you can see i'm not hitting that one really often it'd be great The second one has a lot more, so you have some more freedom to move around. Oh, I actually got hit. It's pretty rare during this to get hit. You can kill a Grindylo that's standing right in front of you, it'd be great, but, you know, sometimes not. Come on, get that. There you go. Just want to make sure I get the gold. This run isn't on record pace or anything, or PB pace, so there's no point in going too quickly. Just make sure that you get the, uh, the requisite amount of kills. And I did. So now we only got Three more shields to go before Maze and Valdi. First one is Exterior Lilies. Normally I would do the Scroot that I did before Lake After. Back again, but I just wanted to make sure I get it over with because that's the last thing I need Extremis for. If I didn't have full Extremis, I would get it from these blue beans here. To go kill that screw, but since I already did it, I don't even have to worry. And basically, all the shields that we're getting have to do with lilies that use her Vivicus to grow them, because we didn't have access to it the first time we went through the level. Ooh, Ron might be too far away. Now we're good.
prefix bathroom. Just more lilies. <clears throat> the route to get this shield is actually different depending on the category you're doing. Because in 100% we want to get the vanishing card, which is over where we first found the egg. And we don't have a reason to go over there, really, so it's best to open those bridges again, those five bridges that we did earlier, to go to go get these lilies this way, that way instead. Wait for somebody. The airplanes don't follow me down. It's like we're good. Alright. The final Tri Wizard Shield that we're going to get is the most RNG one in the game. Basically, we're gonna hope that the moths, the moths don't screw us over. gonna go into the greenhouse and hope they don't do anything too bad to us. Gonna get this first one. We're gonna take some time to stun me. They are gonna deal with that guy. This is actually really good. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. <laughs> Holy crap. And that is all the Triwizard Shields we need. All we gotta do now is go to the third task, which is the maze, and then kill Boldy, and we're done. So the maze has three sections. There is a, an actual maze, and there is a the run-in portion, uh, where if you watch the movie where Cedric and Harry fight along, but it's just Harry. And then there's a final Scroot fight with two Scroots, where we're gonna save Cedric. So the maze isn't randomized, it's the same route every time. Eh, come on, Harry, walk. I'm gonna wait, because those things take a long time. Do the animations. Oh my gosh, walk the right way here. You get hit by one of these, it's a long animation. And it doesn't matter if we get gold or not on the third test, because we're not awarded shields anyways. And it doesn't matter because we have enough shields to beat the game. The controls in this part are literally the worst thing on the planet. Whenever like the camera shifts to you running in a different lane, like you have no control over where you're going basically. straight away. So 
So this Scroot fight, it can either go really good, really bad, or just completely mediocre. Since you're just one person, the only way to kill them is to have them running to, all, to walls. And then cast Inflatus on them, like this. I did not think that first guy got hit. So unfortunately I didn't get either of them killed from that. I just did not think the first guy got hit. I was waiting for the second guy and just get, was gonna kill him. Can't actually get himself a concussion on the Cedric wall like that, so. Wait for him to turn around and come over here. There's only a couple heads away from each. More on this one, obviously. Walk on Harry, on, not on Harry, on Cedric. Yeah, All right, final level, Boldy. That's all we got left. So the Boldy fight has three phases. The first Cedric, phase is a skeleton get back fight. To the cop. The second no! phase I'm not leaving you. is a skeleton fight Kill with the the, no! uh, oh, the, the spell that's connected between you and Voldy. And the third is a statue Harry fight Potter. where you're using that spell to the destroy a statue. And time ends on the final hit of the statue where it explodes. Crucial. So the most efficient way to kill these skeletons is to knock them into each other using Wingardium. But it can be kind of awkward to do quickly and efficiently. That was pretty good. Yeah. So sometimes it's best to do some jinxes as well. You can see it's kind of awkward. Gonna do a couple jinxes. Wow, okay, that's really bad. I've been known to die during Voldy, so I'd rather not do that. It's really awkward because they, they're like slightly above where you would want them to be, so you can't just kind of knock them into them continuously. I'm on really bad health. Crap. Let's just jinx them. Okay, I'm on really, really bad health now. Another one's gonna spawn to my left, most likely. Yeah. Probably one more after this one. I'm gonna grab this real quick. Yeah, still one more. Once Paul Pumpkin passed, he's like, that spawn, we know we're done. So we're on 81 health. Yeah, that's really bad. I want to see the light leave your eyes. Don't you turn your back. Havada Kadam! So now we just have to kill, I think it's, it's either 10 or 12 skeletons with this to activate the final section. And the controls for this thing are like the most awkward thing on the planet. Cause like, you're using an analog stick to both move Harry and the spell. Like, see how Harry's moving and the spell's moving. Yeah, that's controlled by one thing. Makes it really awkward. Something to know about how the spell does damage is that the faster it's going, the more damage it does. So now the statue that's flying around 
you gotta kill it using this spell. So the strat that's commonly used is to stand in this corner. And after it does four attacks, it stays down for a bit so that you can just kind of continuously hit it. So that's one damage of the three. There's two. That was actually a pretty good first cycle. You can you can hit it like in the between cycles. The thing you want to be careful about is that every time the statue hits you, it does 20 damage. Come on, die, die uh, time. So considering I haven't played this game in two months, a 110 ain't too bad. So that was Harry Potter 4. I think later on in the marathon you're gonna see Luigi play Harry Potter 4 GBA, which will be a bit different. But I am soon going to go to bed because it is currently past midnight for me. But I hope everybody enjoyed the best Harry Potter game that we have to offer. It's all downhill from here. I'm gonna let the credits play out with my mic off. No matter how convincingly you tell the story of what happened tonight, few will believe that Voldemort has returned. But tell the story you must.